Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast, Aaron and Fakeo. Doing right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today? You know what? Um, I'm fine. Sure, I'm fine. Why not? Kyle, I want to talk about Ohio State. I want to talk about Minnesota. And Kyle, I want to get out in front of something before you even start. These are not my Minnesota Gophers. I am not. They're your. They are your golden Gophers, though. They they are not. Um, they they absolutely are not. I just want to get out in front of that before you start doing it. We're going to get to know our enemy, who are the Minnesota Golden Gophers, and they are in no way my Gophers. In zero ways are they my Gophers. Don't believe the rumors. Don't believe the haters. Don't don't believe anything from the past that has been taken out of context. These are not my Minnesota Gophers. If you say so. All right, let's 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 get right into it then. Uh, know your enemy, Jared's Minnesota Golden Gophers. They are five oh, and five gosh. coming into this game, three and four in the Big Ten. What's your first thought about about these Golden Gophers, Jared? They're, they're the chats. Why does the chat always take your side? Because you, you because Jared. Because <laughs> uh, the, right, the so, Gophers are, I almost said exceedingly average, but that that would be a compliment. I think um, they have yeah, I mean, struggled a yeah, lot. They, they, they've, this struggled, year. They, they, they've struggled hard. Yeah. I mean, first game, you look at the first game, 13 to 10 over a not good Nebraska team got destroyed by Nebraska. <laughs> 13 lost. to 10 against Nebraska is not their, uh, <laughs> it gets worse from there. Uh, lost to North Carolina, thirty-one to thirteen. Not not good at all. Uh, lost in overtime to Northwestern. Uh, lost severely to Michigan. Okay, they, they get they get a win over Iowa in a twelve to ten fashion. That's a very Iowa isk uh, type of score game sure. there. And then they're they're coming off back to back losses against um, Illinois and Purdue, who we know are not not good not teams good. this year. They're they're not good football teams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Minnesota. They're a, they're an average defensive team. I'll say that. Um, that I mean, and that's about the nicest thing I'm going to say, I think. Um, th- from a rush defense perspective, they're above average. Uh, from a pass defense perspective, they are below average. Um, Very. Uh, I'm, I'm I, 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 okay, yeah. I mean, I might be being nice with below average. Um, I mean, yards per pass, uh, 7.6 yards allowed per pass, which puts them 70th, uh, 77th in the country, which is the bottom third. Uh, I guess maybe almost. Yeah, that would put them in the bottom half, just barely. Um, so bottom half is probably the more accurate way of saying that. But here's, the, here, here's, here's my take on Minnesota, Jared. Here's my take. They're great on fourth down conversions. Number one in the country. They're number one in the country on fourth down conversions. How many attempts? Um, great question. They are 85.7%. That's number that's, one in the country really... at fourth down conversions. And that's a very specific number. Like, I feel like that's not a small sample size at 85.71%. No. Although yeah, I don't it's have not like the raw it's data, sixty six or seventy five or it's three out of four. Yeah, it seems seems like a high number. Uh, they're also it seems like a granular number is my bigger concern. Yeah, yeah, but welcome, Kabuto. Yeah, I think they're, they're great on fourth down conversions, and they are near the top on turnovers. So I'll, I'll take this as don't give them fourth and short. 
don't turn over the turn don't turn the ball over and you're going to be smooth smooth sailing against these gophers uh spikes says compare them to sparty <laughs> uh sparty's offense as we all saw not good it is not good I, I i at least somewhat like their running backs better than uh michigan states but that's not a high bar to to go over though they, they were they, they were going over they did have a running back transition uh they did have this year start off with uh Darius Taylor, but now it's uh, sophomore Jordan Newbin who's been taking the snaps for the past, I think it's five games now. So over the past five games, he's had about 400 yards. So what is that like 75 yards a game? Not not the not the greatest, but is uh, sorry. Uh, did they why why did they make the switch at running back? Is he hurt? Good question. It's, Darius Taylor hurt. Um, yeah, and and that that takes a struggling offense because I really like I actually really like Darius Taylor. Um, it's unfortunate. Yeah, that, said, yeah. Said he he was injured against. Um, yeah, he was he was injured. Yeah, hold them that the low. Game. If we put the game away early, um, so are we holding them to under 150 yards? Um, Rush rushing 150 rush yards that would be nice um i'll say this i think uh taylor's there uh, of of taylor and newbin i i think taylor was the better running back i'm slightly disappointed uh and i assume we're not seeing taylor this i i don't know the latest on the on the taylor injury news maybe kyle can look that up um it's a, it's a part of the problem is that we record these on a Tuesday and then the game obviously happens on a Saturday. So we, we don't always get the most up-to-date injury info, which stinks, but um, I, I do think Taylor is the better of the two running backs. No offense to, to Newbin. And one of the things I really want to see in this football game, because at this point I'm just very Michigan minded, you know, we, we, talked and, a lot and, about and that and honestly honestly i think i think that's going to be the theme of this game is is ohio state going to be thinking towards next weekend here you, you gotta for sure you got you got a team who's not good not not that good they i think i think ohio state will have a lot of success passing the ball in this game i think uh minnesota's rush defense is i, th I think the rush defense is fine but their pass defense i think I think we can see Marvin Harrison. We can see we can see a lot of the receivers getting open in this game here. So I, I think I think we'll see more passing in this game. And, and that's and that says a lot when when uh, McCord threw for over three hundred yards last weekend against Michigan State. Yeah, and and what we were talking about before is that. While the Minnesota rush defense is above average, the pass defense is pretty far below average. So, yeah, and Kyle's right. Like, I think putting this game away early, getting to bed early, getting ready for Michigan week is is probably pretty heavily on on everyone's minds here. Um, yep. I think that so would speak, be so ideal. Speaking of injury, uh, so ransom, no ransom this game, no ransom for the Michigan game. Correct. Uh, Ryan Day came out and said that he will be out for the rest of the regular season. Uh, said that potentially could come back for a postseason, but in my postseason, I'll, I'll, take, that. I'm, I'll, I'm I'll take that as if if Ohio State win, Ohio State wins these next two games, it goes to the Big Ten championship game. I, I anticipate ransom to not play in the no. big 10 championship game either no i think when i think when ryan day said postseason i think he was pretty i in my mind he actually said playoffs but he may not have but yeah regardless well, he's, a, he's a he said regular season okay it could come back for postseason yeah i postseason to yeah. me means playoffs. reading the tea reading tea leaves yes yeah. he, he means the playoffs yes yeah of course he just doesn't want to 
say playoffs because it's not by by no means a certainty of high states going to the playoffs uh more, more on that maybe, more on that one not. um on upcoming what is a golden gopher episode. just a statue so lame is that is that the story behind the golden gopher i just assumed it was like a golden retriever except you know a gopher yes so wait a minute. Really the lore of the really golden, golden gopher is that it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a statue. This, this is not this is not Big Ten lore. I'm uh, up on apparently. Interesting. Learn something new every day. I will. I will stalk that way. So we always ask what a terrapin is, and we always ask what a. Uh, there's another one we always make sure to ask, but early 1900s lore, let's go. Exactly. The older the lore, the better. Uh, now, we know it, We know what an lion eye is. There's an, what, it's a Hoosier. What, what is a Hoosier, maybe? I forget. Corn husker. No, I know what a corn husker is. I'm from Ohio. I've husked some corn in my day, I tell you what. Um, <laughs> Did you know, Jared? Nittany lion. Did that's you what it is. Know. You always ask what's a nittany lion. That's 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 what it is. Thank you, Kabuto. Did you know that Minnesota has more national titles since 1950 <laughs> than Michigan? I'd... You you should have opened the show with that. I'm just that that, that I should just... have. I should have. I should. That, have, that should but... have been the opener to the show. I think. <laughs> Oh, damn. Show Big edit. Ten has some bangers. <laughs> Show edit. Yeah. If I if I put any effort into the post-production of this show, I would do what you sometimes see like on YouTube, especially they'll do where they'll take like one snippet from the show, copy it and put it at the front as sort of like a quick grabber. Um, that would be that moment right now if I did that. But um, unfortunately, when it comes to editing the podcast, uh, speed uh, because sports and news and things becoming, you know, speed sometimes takes precedent. Uh, I, speed always takes precedent. Uh, Michigan is called a Wolverine for Custard's Cavalry Division during the war. Huh. Can't be late to market. Exactly, Spikes. Right. So some other some other names going back to uh, Jared's Golden Gophers here. Uh, so their quarter their quarterback here, uh, not great, not great here. Uh, you want to take a you want to take a whack at this uh, quarterback Gopher here? Okay. Okay. First off, phrasing. Uh, second, uh, it's Calic Manus. I think Jared nailed that one. <laughs> I, he thinks Greek. I can do, I can do Greek. I can do the Greek names. I can do the Polish. I can do the 52%. Polish names. I can do the Italian names. I'm not bad with the French names either. 52% completion for the year. 52%. That's. Bad. That my, is my bad. Per, yeah. My, listen, we've been doing the podcast. I think this is. This is our eighth eighth season, Kyle. Um, and in that time, I've learned a few things about football. And I'm going to tell you right now, 52% completion percentage is not good. No, that's I, definitely that's, not. That, that's, my, that, that's my expert take on that. Jared nearly avoided saying Pollock just there. Is, is that a, is that a, I think Pollock is, is a, correct term i i wasn't trying not to say it like I, I don't i don't think that's a negative i don't i don't think that's a i don't know maybe it is i'm not editing so, it yeah, out no. as as mentioned i don't put any effort into the post-production of this show so as, as i mentioned not worried about not worried about their quarterback only 52 percent, 13 touchdowns seven ish seven interceptions for the year uh, they mainly have one target and that's daniel jackson who has 
uh, 45 catches for the year, almost 700 yards, seven touchdowns, so over half of the touchdowns for uh, for the wide receiver core here. And their next receiver, 26 uh, catches for 334 yards. So you cover Daniel Jackson. You well, really, really, I think I think Minnesota is going to try to run the ball. They've seen the success that some other teams have had against Ohio State and try to run the ball with Newbin, uh, but. If Ohio State gets out early like they did against Michigan State last weekend, they're going to try to pass the ball. Not going to be a good day for Jared's Golden Gophers. My Golden Gophers. Uh, the As a team, uh, the Minnesota Golden Gophers run the ball 60% of the time. That is 6-0% of the time, which is a lot. Um it's a- a lot so kyle um following up my expert analysis with uh, expert analysis of his own which is that minnesota is going to run the ball a lot um and as kyle was pointing out as a team minnesota is not a not an effective passing team um their completion percentage as a team ranks them 123rd in the country uh yards per pass 104th in the country uh passing yards per game 120th in the country and and again when when i say interceptions my 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 interception number is like per pass so when i tell you they're 93rd in the country in interceptions don't immediately jump to but they barely throw the ball well that's that's adjusted that's adjusted jared why do you pick losers I, I I don't make the schedules. I mean, if you want to see me pick losers, wait, that that's next episode. That's the sloop picks. Uh, no, you picked me, Kabuto. You picked me. You picked the guy who picks losers. What does that say about you? <laughs> All right. So defensively, we're going to move on to the defensive side here. Uh, I think they have a pretty decent linebacker, uh, Baranowski, 52 tackles for the year. But you, you know, one of our sayings here. And Kyle, you just you're, handled you're, a Polish name on my behalf, yeah. and I'll say you did well. Thank you. Appreciate it. Their uh, secondary, uh, I think four, I think their four main defensive backs are like in the top six or seven in total tackles. Which that's not a good thing. Not typically a good sign. No, uh, no. You, you don't so want so there's you don't want your defensive means, backs being your your no. most prolific. No, I can tacklers. understand. I can understand if maybe one of the safeties, maybe one your, of the safeties, your strong, like your strong safety. Sure. Okay. Sure, I can see sure. that. So uh, Tyler Nubbin, I think is I can't remember if he's the strong safety, but he's second on the team, forty nine tackles. So just three tackles from the leading tackler on the team. Four interceptions for the year as well. So you're going to see, I think you're going to see Nubbin all over the field there. And then Green, the other safety, is third on the team with 48 tackles. So their main linebacker, one, and then their two safeties are second and third on the team in total tackles. Yeah. Um, this oh, and, is... then their cor- and then their corner is fourth with 49 tackles, or yeah, with 47 tackles. Yeah. Um... And they're pretty middle of the road, maybe slightly above average as far as sacking the quarterback. Um, so that's good for them, I suppose. Uh, and they they do generate a lot of interceptions for for what that's worth. Yeah. Like I mentioned, uh, Nubbin has four interceptions and their two other corners, Henderson and Jones, each have a pair of interceptions as well. So that's that's eight interceptions between the three of them. Um, which is, which is more than Ohio State, because which is more than Ohio State. No Ohio State player has more than one interception in the year. All right, I found some more nice things to say about Minnesota. Are you ready? This isn't they even have a nice gonna shade be of gold. What's that? They have a nice shade of gold. They do, but it's really off put by whatever that maroon they have going in. That's. That's that's terrible. Uh, no, it's Nubin, but I wasn't going to correct Kyle. 
I pre- I but at the same time, um, Kabuto, uh, I I actually don't, also don't know what I'm talking about, so maybe it is Nubbin. I would have I would have pronounced it Nubin personally. Nubs for short. We can just call him Nubs. Because I I get that moment where it's like, hey Kyle, I think it's actually. But then I, then I realize I don't know either. What right do I have to correct him? This is the Sloopcast. We mispronounce names. It's what we do here. It's one of the uh, it's one of the rules. It is one of the rules. All right, Kyle. The nice thing about Minnesota. Before you got me distracted talking about colors. I'm curious if they're brothers. What's up? I'm curious if they're brothers, Jordan and Tyler Newbin or Nubbin. Once again, I'm going to go. Let's just go Newbin until we until we know otherwise. Um, well, I'm going to say they are because they're both from St. Charles, Illinois. Oh, everyone's from St. Charles, Illinois. It's 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 okay. it's the it's it's basically bigger than Chicago at this point. Or or maybe you're right. Um, soft R on. I I I, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Um, the Kyle, yeah, you listen. I'm trying to say something nice about Minnesota and you keep interrupting me. How dare you? They aren't as bad as Sparty Spikes. I agree. Uh, that's not Take what I was going to say. From your goofers. It's not what I was going to say, Spikes, but it's also accurate. Marge, yeah, marginally say, better. Marginally what better. Say, Jared? Penalty statistics legitimately this is one of the better disciplined teams you see in college football their penalty per play rate is 0. 0.02 penalties per game they average only slightly over three penalties a game pity from the refs spikes that's a decent i can't prove it but the interesting thing, though, they they don't do that many penalties. They don't have that many. Yeah, they don't have that many penalties per game. But penalty yards per game is yeah. over nine. So so that tells me they have a lot of fifteen um, yarders. They make them count. Fifteen yarders or holds. Well, tens or ten or fifteen yarders. They make them count. There's not a lot of yeah. penalties, but when they get those penalties, they're big. Penalty yards per penalty. Um, I, penal, <laughs> penalties per play, 0. 0.02. Penalty yards per penalty, 9.3. 110th in the country. They go from second in the country to 110th in the country. Yeah. They, they they shop for their penalties at Costco. I don't know if I liked that joke or not. You guys tell me. What a what a tough like I guess two two out of three. They they had a tough draw from the Big Ten East, getting Michigan, Michigan State, and Ohio State as their as their cross division. Yeah, you you hate to get Sparty in that cross division, I tell you what. <laughs> yeah. All right, I, I think that's enough about Sparty here. Or Sparty about the goofers here, Jared. You want to want to get into our predictions? We can get into the predictions. Um, I'm just grabbing the. Uh, we didn't have Austin's over unders in there, so I'm just grabbing those real quick. All right, I'm back. Yep, I'm, I'm back. Just, and I'm focused again. Um, just submitted those. So. Yep, he All just right. posted them. All right. Uh, All right. Fa- so who's, who's our, where are we starting? Who's our guest? Uh, who's our guest? Yeah, who's our guest picker this week? Odin, Odin in the Odin. Discord. He goes by Odin. Shout out to Odin. Does he have a god complex? Ask him. All right. Let's let's start with Ohio State player to watch. As I mentioned, that uh, Ohio State is thin in the safeties here, but. Uh, Ransom not going to be in this game. Not going to be next, 
next weekend. So I'm going to go with his replacement, and that's uh, that's Styles. I think Styles has filled in beautifully, and I, I think he's going to have a great game as well here. Minnesota's not going to have success passing the ball, so they're going to have to try to run it early. And the way that I've seen Styles these past few games, he kind of creeps up there and makes makes those kind of plays. I anticipate him to do the same in this week here. So my Ohio State player to watch is Mr. Styles. Uh, I'm going with uh, Mike Hall and Tyleek Williams up the middle. Um, I, I talked about this in in a lot of a lot of breath, a lot of detail during the uh, during the Scarlet and Great episode. I'm very concerned. I'm very concerned about Ohio State's run defense right now. So and Minnesota is a running first, second and third team. It's going to be it's going to be my main focus here. So uh, right up the middle, my call and Tylee Williams. All right. All right. Um, Odin here. Wow. He wrote himself uh, some paragraphs here. <laughs> All right. Ohio State player to watch here. Uh, great first half for Michigan State. I don't think they wanted to release anything in the second half, and I don't blame them. I'm so happy to see Hicks play along with other backups like Hartford, etc. And I'm hoping that happens this Saturday too. Players to watch would be Cody Simon. He's going to have a great game if Tommy is still out, um, may get an interception. They need to show up against the Gophers offense because it looks like they have the ability to put up points. Yeah. Let, let's let, let's hope, let's hope Proctor will be fought, will be back too. Last two games, defense has either looked tired or, in a way, not the same that they've been in the in the first many weeks. This is a good game to come back from and look dominant. Also, we need to fix special teams. That Michigan State. Fake punt was the most obvious setup of all time, and Michigan's going to see that, and they will pounce on it if we don't fix that this Saturday. Uh, Minnesota, 22.5 points per game, ranking 92nd in the country. Enemy player to watch. Um, I'm going with the running back, Newbin. Um that's I mean, this is my theme. This is what I'm doing here. Um, I want to see I need to see Ohio State's run defense get better. PJ Fleck and wants to be Trestle so bad. You are not wrong. Um, in fact, you're right. And I got the I got the other I got the other uh, newbin or nubbin. No, as my uh, as my Minnesota player to watch here, as I mentioned, second on the team in tackles, four interceptions for the year. He's going to try to be a nuisance in that uh, in that middle of the field. There, he's he's the player to watch in my in my mind. All right, what, what does Odin does... say, Jared? Oh, I guess I'm doing it. Um, Minnesota. Five and five, which may look better than Michigan State because they were a three win team when we played them. But remember how Minnesota barely came out uh, with a few wins, especially Nebraska game. I, I think they're better than MSU on offense, especially with a quarterback. <sighs> that defense is doo doo though uh player to watch for the gophers i think uh should be their quarterback greek name i'm guessing too lazy to type it out i wouldn't unless I'm, I'm glad i didn't have to sp uh, spell it off rip today um he came off a great game versus purdue and it seems like he's got a running back that can also uh, relieve pressure off of him if needed. Uh, seems as if ESPN is calling the spread at 27.5 for Ohio State. I think that's a great call. Um, oh, he. 
Okay, he goes, he goes on then, the then he did this then, then he did the score prediction we'll we'll cover that later yeah so so he ha- so he has the quarter he has the quarterback uh he has he has the quarterback uh ethan kelly kelly Menis. I, I butchered that one <laughs> yeah you did all right key matchup jared key matchup i've i have a seat running back versus uh their Third linebacker, mainly uh, Baron Nowski. There we go. Got it the second time there. Uh, I think, and I know I mentioned that Ohio State is going to be passing a lot too, but they still need to have some running back pre- or need to have some running presence there. And I, I think that's the matchup to watch here. I think, I think Ohio State's offensive line is starting to get some momentum, get some confidence back in them. So I think they'll. I think they'll do pretty well in this game, but it's got to be the running back versus the linebacker to watch. Which which Duolingo link is that, Kabuto? Is that is that for Greek or for Polish? Out of curiosity, that's, that's just generic. That's just generic. That's just generic. Yeah, well, it's it's a joke, Kyle. I I can also read the link. It was, but it was it was it was a joke. What's your key matchup, Jared? Uh, I have the Gopher interior offensive line versus Ohio State's defensive tackles. Uh, I, I have seen it one too many times this year where Ohio State's defensive line gets pushed off the ball during the run game. That right. I, I and I'm I it needs to be corrected, needs to be corrected quickly. All right, and I'm going to guess based on Odin's paragraph here. He talks about he talks about the uh, he talks about the special teams here. So I'll I'll just put in here it's the special teams for for his key matchup. <laughs> Didn't want to read it. Um, did he? Okay, yeah. All right. Um. Where are we at? The f- we the we're on to the spread pick. Uh, we locked this in at twenty seven point five, which is to say our CBS app locked this in at twenty seven point five. Um, I'm gonna go Minnesota here. That feels like a lot of points. Um, it feels like a lot of points. I feel like Ohio State's gonna be very happy to sort of put this game away quickly uh and and move on um it's 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 time you know it's it's like hey get on to hate week i I think is about where we're at right now what you got for the final score uh something something funny sex number i don't know i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna wait for a number jared (laughs) You're going to make me break tradition live on the show. I am. I'm going to go with 35 to 10. 35 to 10. That's very similar to what I have. I I agree. I think if Ohio State wanted to, they could eat. They could. Uh, they could do. They could. Um, get the spread here. Surpass the spread at 27 and a half here. But. I think kind of like the Michigan State game, they will they'll ease back in the second half there. And if they're only up by twenty one points, twenty points, so be it. That and that's I think they'll be fine with that. So I got I got Haas State thirty five. The Goofers they'll get some they'll get some cheap points in the second half. So I got fourteen. Thirty five to fourteen. I will say this as as far as like my ten versus your 14 uh minnesota has had a uh a fair amount of success kicking the ball 84 percent field goal percentage not Ooh. bad yep. not bad not bad not bad all right um time for oh well odin odin says here um he agree he thinks it's a great call for that 27 and a half seems like they've been been on it this year for calling the spread um if i can give it my own i'd call 30 and a half um you can see it ending at a 41 to 7 game 
Yeah, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be thrilled. I'd be thrilled if it's a forty plus to seven game. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be, yeah, I'd be ecstatic if that happens. But I just, but I feel Ohio State's going to let let the foot off the gas. Yeah, he also on. says um, Ohio State by thirty four needs to be entertaining, and if we put backups in early, I'd be very pleased. Hard to say. We only allow three points, and then say we don't look as good on defense as we have been before. I mean. That is a that as in multiple open passes happened and long runs. If Michigan State can do that to us, I think Minnesota and easily Michigan could do the same. So change adjustments need to come, and I trust Knowles for that. Then he says alternative score prediction 63 to 6. Which is a nice score. Yes. I like the people are now giving actual predictions plus the funny sex number prediction. I appreciate it. Right, let's is, get into is, is Austin's. Let's get into Austin o, uh, over unders, which he said the boat boaters unders. Oh, the, the, there is a V in there. My mind, my my mind. Boatver. Got, boatver. Boatver unders. Boatver unders. I, I no. Did you try it out loud, Austin, before you typed it? Sometimes you have to try it out loud first. Just, just, a, just a tip. So the first one he has here uh, is uh, Kelly Menace passing yards. That was that 20. Was, that was, that was closer. closer. I know it wasn't right, but 20 and a half. 20 and a half attempts. I'm really curious. I'm really curious. I'm going to gonna look up his his logs here. So his past, his past four games here, his past four games, 42 attempts, 22 attempts, 22 and 25. But against Michigan, he was five for 15. Now we're, we're, we're just talking about past attempts, right? Yeah. Passing attempts. So last As, weekend against last weekend against Purdue, he was 18 for 42. Against Illinois, 11 for 22. Against Sparty, he was 14 for 22. Against Iowa, he was 10 for 25. What was it against Michigan? 5 for 15. So, Ooh. you playing along, that's a 42% completion rating, 50, 63, 40, and then 33%. Um, Yikes. Yeah, all, all of that average is out, over. by the way, to... I'll go over. Sorry. Kyle says he's going over. All, all that average is out to about 25 uh, pass attempts per game. And it, it, my initial thought was, well, they're going to have to throw a lot because Ohio State's going to put them down early. But then my second thought was, what if Minnesota just doesn't run that many plays because they don't get that many first downs? And what if Ohio State tries to just kill the clock and Minnesota just doesn't get that many opportunities as far as number of plays? So I talked myself, I talked myself into the over, then I talked myself into the under. I think I'm gonna go with my second thought and say under. All right. All right, next one here is Ohio State rushing yards over under 167 and a half. 167 and a half. Um, I'm going to. I'm actually going to go under here. Um, I Because Kyle was talking about it earlier in the show, and I agree with him that I think Ohio State's going to try to like kill this game as soon as possible. And I think they're going to do that by throwing the ball. Um, I think Ohio state's really trying. I think Kyle McCord's starting to get into, get into a rhythm. I think they're going to want to build on top of that while they can. And Jared uses Ryan day's beard color guy. I, I have, I have grays in my beard. I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm, I'm, fully gray over here well not fully gray but naturally gray um 
fully naturally gray. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, point here, however, um, is that Minnesota does have a decent run defense. Uh, it's it's just decent though. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but their pass defense is pretty bad. I think I think that's where most of the yards are going to come from. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go under. All right. Did you give it? Yeah, a- I got under. I got, yeah, I got under as well for the rushing yards as well too. Pretty much what Jared said. They're, they'll be passing the ball a lot more, less less carries. Yeah, under. Uh, Minnesota first downs achieved seven and a half. Seems very low. I feel like this one's a trap. I'm going to go over for this one. And now, now if you now if you change that to let's just say like three and a half first downs in the first half, I'll probably take the under <laughs> on that one. But I, I think, like I said, I think they'll get some cheap yards and maybe some cheap points in the second half. So I think they'll get over that seven and a half just because of that. Yeah. Um, I don't, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go under, I'm going under. That's it. I, I'm, just, I don't have I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to quickly look at their past few games here. So last weekend they had 21 first downs against Illinois. They had 16, but I think the bigger biggest question is let's look at the Iowa, Iowa, and, Michigan. Uh, Mich- yeah. Mm-hmm. So they had 12 against Iowa. Okay. Against Michigan. 10. Hmm. Should I switch? I'm uh, uh, okay. You convinced me I'm switching to over. Okay. Stover catches four and a half since the first, since October 1st. And yes, Yes, Stover has been injured for a couple of games. But only missed one of them, like fully. Yeah, but then the one he was yeah. in, he still, didn't, he still didn't get a catch in that game. Since the 1st of October, he's only hit four and a half the over on that once. And that was last weekend. So I'm going to go under with this one. Any t- anytime we get hyped up about a tight end had a great game, oh, they got a lot of catches. Oh, they got multiple touchdowns. This is the year, and yes, this is the year of the tight end here. But either 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 it's going to trend back where he's not. He's only going to get four or three catches in this game, or Ryan Day realizes, hey guys, Stover is not that far off from the Ohio State record. Let's get him the ball more. <laughs> But that's not going to happen. So I'm going to go under. All right. Call me crazy here, Kyle. But not crazy. Thank you. Um, I think Ryan Day's goal as far as the passing game is just to keep just to keep building with Kyle McCord. Uh, that that that's it. He doesn't care about stats. He doesn't care about this. He doesn't care about that. Uh, I think Ryan Day's number one goal right now with the offense is to just keep Kyle McCord in rhythm, gaining momentum, gaining confidence, gaining. And I think the best way to do that is by giving him his safety. Well, his underneath safety blanket versus his over the top safety blanket. Uh, So I'm going to go over on this one. I know, I know the odds are against me. Uh, I I know. I think the number might be a, a, a tad bit high. But I'm 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 still gonna go over. Yeah. All right. So Jared's going over on that one. Minnesota yards per carry, four point seven five. That it. Ohio State better get the under on this. <laughs> <laughs> God, they better get the under on this. We we talked we talked a lot about this on our Monday episode here. Ohio State's got to fix that rushing rushing defense here. If, if it's over five, man. it's been over. It's been over five a lot lately. Um, uh huh. Man, now, if if it's if if it's over five in this game, oh boy, <laughs> there is going to be a lot of a lot of concern going into the, the following weekend. Lots with Tommy playing for. 
part. I doubt it. I really the the problems with the Ohio State run defense. Uh, we're we're not isolated to to last week. Computer, I think that means you're leaving. Bye. Peace out. Um, I I, I don't think it was isolated to to Tommy. I th- I think that they've been having run defense issues since Purdue. Uh, at least since Purdue, maybe further. Um, and, and Tommy was perfectly healthy for most of those games. Yards per carry, 4.75. One of the benefits that Ohio State will have in this game is that they'll just be able to completely dedicate themselves to the run. Minnesota mm-hmm. runs 60% of the they time. Should. They only complete 50% of their passes. So I think Ohio State will sell out pretty heavily for the run, uh, which should keep that number under 4.75. Right. Somehow it was pretty stout versus Notre Dame. That's a very good point, Spikes. Um, I, I, I think there there is something to the early part of the season versus the later part of the season as far as the run stopping issues i'm not sure what that is though because they have all the same people um so i'm not sure why that is all right next one here ty leak ty leak williams over under three and a half total tackles for this game. Now, I originally put under here because I'm like three and a half for a for a DT seems like a lot. Well, the past three games, four tackles against Sparty, five against Rutgers, four against Wisconsin. You know, I, I changed my mind. I'm going to, I'm going to go over here. I think Tylee keeps that trend going, getting four or five tackles in this game. And if he gets that many tackles, that tells that Ohio State's doing very well in stopping the run. I my my bigger concern is where is he making those tackles? Fair, fair. You know, is he making those tackles at the line of scrimmage or three yards on our side of the line of scrimmage? Is fair. Is 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 so the issue? Got? Um, how many Kyle did it? If if I said I don't know if I brought this up um a hundred times yet or not that Minnesota runs the ball sixty percent of the time. I think you did. Over. All right. All right. And the last one here, Marvin Harrison Jr. Total yards for the game. 144 over. and a half. <laughs> yeah, over. I'll I'm take just, I'll take I'm just, I'm just taking I I don't I didn't even I didn't read the number. I didn't see the number. It's just, just gonna take over. Yeah. Well, he's on, he's only done it once in the past three games. But twice twice in the last four games, though. So 50 50 shot that he'll do that. Remember I'll, what I'll, ta- I said? I'll take my I'll take my I'll take my odds and, and do the over. Remember what I said about Stover and the safety blanket and keeping Kyle McCord in rhythm and building on his rhythm? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Marvin Marvin's that safety blanket. All right. That is Austin's over unders. I'm just gonna go quickly into our mailbag here and see what we got. Um See, that was who should be on the watch list for Minnesota for this sinking ship game. Who should be on the watch list as far as like players to watch? I think we gave you uh, a bunch. Um, Yeah, I I mean, keep keep an eye out for either of the new bins. How about that? There you go. Either of the new bins. both he also asked, how, not either of how the badly are we going to explode? How badly are we going to explode this sunken ship, sunken boat? Um, I, I think I said it before. I, if Ryan Day wants to, yeah, he can, he can, he can blow that up into many pieces. But I, I think he'll he'll ease up. All, he'll ease up. I, I think it's totally plausible to see this game play out much Gentle like cap this. size. <laughs> yeah, I. I think you'll see this play out a lot like the Sparty game played out. That would be my call. Yep. 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 
All right, that's that's the mailbag there. Uh, anything else? Anything else you want to um, mention real quick before we end the episode? I think we're good. Um, just want to. Uh, yeah, I don't even feel like plugging Kyle. I have a bit of a headache. Uh, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, anything in Kyle's corner here? Uh, <laughs> no is an acceptable answer. <laughs> I don't because there is one thing I want to talk about, but that's going to take up a lot of time here. So we will, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just end the episode here. Kyle, will you promise to tell us what it is on the Friday episode? As long as we don't run over. Yeah. Well, cause I'm intrigued. And if you got me intrigued, then I'm sure people are intrigued. And this is what we call a tease to get people to listen to the next episode. It's I'll, I'll just leave it with this header. No, this head, this headline, this headline, just the headline. Uh, uh, you just know what? I, I say I say go total mystery box on it. Right, fine. We'll, we'll do we'll do a mystery box. You, you listen to Friday's episode then. All right. Uh, tonight's ending go music. Go crew. Uh, tonight's ending music uh, is Pray for Sleep. Uh, the name of this song is Shade. Uh, th this is heavier than what we normally play on the show, but uh, give it a give it a listen if you're listening to the podcast version of the show. And if you uh, watch this on YouTube instead of listening to the podcast version, we don't actually play the song at the end because YouTube's YouTube. But there is a link in the description where you can you do you know what to do with a link. All right. I don't have to tell I don't have to tell you how to use a hyperlink. So, with all that being said, I would like to No, what do I do? I say once again the name of this band is Pray for Sleep, and with that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beers, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, Pray for Sleep. Mm -hmm.